The Frankenstein story was written by Mary Shelley. She's on this page. <laughs> In, uh, in 1818, it's a heck of a long time ago. It's a very, very heck of a long time ago. The bicentennial has passed. A bicentennial has passed and is dead and buried and all that. <laughs> There's two things that Hollywood thought was absolutely marvelous about this. It's camp and it's free because copyright's gone <laughs> in, uh, 18, in 1931 when they wanted to make a movie. So they did. They also decided, eh, yeah, okay. So plots, Mary Shelley actually has a plot. Uh, morality, tale, yeah, all of that. So <laughs> <laughs> who needs it? Not necessarily. <laughs> the first one, which is just called, just called Frankenstein, uh, is from 1931. Um, <sighs> the good things it's talky so it has music it is so impressed by the fact that it's a talky it's 1931 that it has music it has some speech uh, yeah <laughs> they're very happy with themselves it has a monster It has science. It is trying to be uh, scientific. Um, the original uh, Mary Shelley on, on the Wikipedia, I was reading Wikipedia and, and some people later than Shelley, of course, have uh, said this is pretty much in 1818. She wrote the very, very, very first actual science, science fiction story. So that's what it is. It's a scientist who doesn't... Who, who who makes a creature and then the the actual tale asks a question because a good si bit bit of science fiction asks questions and wants to put it out there and doesn't have to answer the question it's just ask the question what is the responsibility that the creator that, that the scientist has towards his creature that is the question don't worry in this entire film series they never come to that. <laughs> Which is actually a bloody shame because that is a great question. It is. It is a very interesting question. This is this first movie, nineteen thirty-one. Uh, it's got um, a chappy called Clive, sorry, Colin Clive as the the scientist. He's pretty forgettable. <laughs> um, one of the reasons I wanted to watch this particular film series because. Considering the dates, I realized this is not any of them going to be scary, right? It's not scary <laughs> because we we are so much more advanced in 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 in, in cinematic enjoyment of cinema of cinema that this this is this is kid stuff, literally kid stuff. Um, what is good about the 1931 version and and quite a few of the sub subsequent versions is that it is. No matter what picture you look at, it's always hand it's pretty is a little bit overstated, but handsome. It is a good looking picture. Always. Eye candy is good. It's like like shadows and and and, and reflections and then a moody glance and that is nice. Let, let's let's make that clear. They have that from the 1931 version and all the way down. They keep keep going with that. Uh, nice. But we are uh, short on plots. Mm -hmm. Short on... And, and being short on plot is annoying. But you're also, they're also short on motiv motivation. Why do people things? I mean, plots, events happen and people react. But people are doing stuff without uh, events happening. So the motivation is... Eh. Uh, great scenery, some special effects. What they have, it's not that much, but it's nice. that they, they spend a lot of money on this. Sound design, which is to them is brand spanking new. 
the sound design is nice. The the dialogue needs they need to remember that oh yeah you need to actually speak not just say something. There's a difference between just saying something and, sp- and actually having a conversation. Uh, it's slow and moody. It's also dumb <laughs> because plot as in lack of and. I think in 1931, this is this is not yet a movie. This is not a not a movie yet. This is not a film. So I have dubbed this film to be the qualification of meh. This is meh. <laughs> not good enough. No, no, no. And then in 1935, which is a lot, four years later, they do the second one, The Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> They want to fit to the 1931 version. But they realized they left a lot in that version on the table in way of possible plots. So one of the things they do is they open with a shot of 1816. Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley and Lord Byron are talking in high British uh, British, uh, accents about a morality tale of, of... the story that she's uh, conceiving at the time. Great, I love it. Problem is, that's it. That's just one scene. And they don't come back to it at all. That's that's all they do with it. A little bit of fun is that this is called the Bride of Frankenstein, so there will be a lady at some point. The person who plays Mary, Shelley, is also who plays the bride. The bride. So <laughs> it's just good because. Bride doesn't get any any lines, so this is the only time she gets a chance to talk. <laughs> this has the, this one has the exact same problem as the previous one: a lack of pl- plots, a, a a motivational issues. People are just doing higgledy piggledy stuff. In the original story of Mary Shelley in eighteen eighteen, the um, it is the monster who asks for a mate from the scientists um in this thing they sort of go oh yeah there's it would be nice to have like like the visuals of of a female so just the scientist decides to make make him a mate he doesn't it gets no not asked or anything like that because problem with the the monster uh, in the in this one they explain how he learns how to talk, which is roughly how it happens in the original story. He gets to at least talk now, say words. It's not Shakespeare, but he says words. But it's not he who asks for a mate. That just is pushed upon him. And she's only on screen on screen for maybe a couple of minutes. So if you're here, if you go to see that movie to watch The Bride of Frankenstein to actually see her, nah. Plus sides, it is moody and visually interesting. The soundscape, ah, they have dialogue. They have in 40, 35, they now know that you actually have to have a conversation. People talk a lot. Wow, I was going. <sighs> They talk. <laughs> they actually talk. They have a conversation. They have like like more than four lines each. Jeez. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Um, it is the same uh, scientist as in the first one. Same director, by the way, as well. Uh, same chap to play the monster, which is Boris Karloff, who, not with the name, is 100% British. <laughs> he just got himself a nice name because it sounded good. <laughs> I looked him up. He's really good. He has um, I'll come to me. he's all made up so you don't really see him and it's about movement. I don't think the monster is in any way interesting. Um, it's just not. He's just going around going uh, and then later going once. It's not interesting. I have the, the rating. Better still, but still meh. <laughs> meh plus? Yeah. It's still not a meh movie. And a half. <laughs> it's still not a movie. It's better because they, they did learn how to do the dialogue and they. Uh, but it goes nowhere. It's, it's lip. Each of these movies, and that's gonna keep going, ends with the monster uh, 
of falling down a canyon, getting burned in in, in a windmill, or or or, or getting in, in in a sulfur pit, dead, obviously dead at the end, and always at the beginning he's fine. It's another problem that that. <laughs> However, they are trying to keep these movies in the same universe. So, Son of Frankenstein, 1939. It is now another four years later. And now they have asked Basil Rathbone to play the scientist, who is son of scientist. He is the, the, the other scientist actually, I believe he actually dies in the... In the spoiler. <laughs> we don't care. Does he die? doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> he is son of scientists, grown son of scientists. He also has little son. He has son, he has wife, and he comes to Frankenstein. Uh, the should probably tell you the it takes place in Frankenstein at Frankenstein Castle somewhere in Germany. Uh, Mary Shelley, who traveled around a lot in the that exact period when she wrote the story, she traveled around the Austria, what is now Austria and Germany, they were called differently at then because complicated. The Austro-Hungarian Empire at that point. And there is actually a castle by Frankenstein and they, the Wikipedia says that she probably, well she would have seen the name on the map certainly and she may have actually visited it. So. so Castle Frankenstein is a real thing, it's actually more of a manor house than a castle but in here it's a castle and it's set somewhere so son comes uh, to see about father's legacy because uh, he wants to know and then he gets into it and this movie is actually a movie it's Basil Rathbone is good there is dialogue there's uh, instead of uh, the, the, the 35 one I just had a recap of the earlier movie so you, you were caught up just bunch of images and some some talk whereas this one does it by exposition they talk the he, he comes and he talks to the butler about his late father and what happened and he talks to the burgermeister etc etc and this film actually has a plot this film actually has good acting it's got Basil Rathman duh <laughs> <laughs> and the, the lady who plays the wife is good the little the little tyke is good he's like like Four, year, four or five years old, something like that. He is phenomenally good. I looked him up. He's still around. He's, he's a nice old gentleman now. He was in Hollywood, in, in working in Hollywood for about four years only, and he worked on the Bambi film. So, mm -hmm. the sound for, for voice acting, of course. He is cute, and there are scenes between him and the monster, because the little boy is not afraid of anything and a big monster comes and he just talks to the monster and it's awesome the scenes like that are in uh, in the other two movies where he talks to a little girl and one time it works out and one time it doesn't work out but <clears throat> it is just good and it's got this film's got all the good things that this entire series has the moody looks the the the, the uh, the art design, the sound design, uh, uh, cinematography, all of it, plus the plots, plus the acting, plus all the good stuff. And this time the monster is actually um, ah, still still Boris Karloff. <laughs> the interesting thing about Boris Karloff is he big dude. Interesting thing about Basil Rathbone is he also big dude. And they actually, they made this, one of the few things that is actually mistaken in this thing is that there's a scene where the monster comes and he has, to, and, and Basil has to go, oh, you're, you're big and scary. But they're almost at the same height. And, you know, now they would just put the monster on, on, on a little block so he'd be taller because it would work better. He's taller. But I looked up Basil Rathbone and he's actually an inch taller than Boris, Boris Karloff. <laughs> yeah, they should have put him on a jelly ram. <laughs> they should have put him on jelly ram. This I was thinking that, yeah. And and then it would have worked better. But okay, th th it's it's 1939. They're not that versed yet. So <laughs> this one good enough. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm you know 
if you're going to see any of these movies, go watch this one. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein looks notwithstanding, because the looks of the Bride of Frankenstein herself, phenomenal. But you can see that on YouTube. It's just a little clip. It's just like maybe a minute and a half. So, 1942, they did The Ghost of Frankenstein. Oh, I should have said in the, in the Son of Frankenstein, there's the Igor, the Igor, the, the scary hunchback person. Uh, Bello Lugosi played that and he did wonderfully. So, nothing bad about that. <laughs> Go see he. Uh, in The Ghost of Frankenstein, Unfortunately, we have now lost Basil Rathbone. I think he's probably playing Sherlock Holmes, so yeah. he's not available. Yeah. <laughs> he busy. It's 1942. He busy. He was doing a lot for the war effort, so so maybe reason why. They got a chap which I'd, I'd never seen before. Cedric, Cedric Hardwick, who is actually a little older. He is... Uh, it is... This series does, it's the, the previous event was uh, some years ago and it's like, <laughs> this is like three, three years earlier. So some years ago, <laughs> some years, some years ago, <laughs> like <laughs> anywhere, because now this is this, his, this is Basil's brother in the story for Franken brother, because Basil was called Wolf and this one, uh, this one's called something else. I forgot what it's called. Uh, <laughs> Ludwig, this one's called Ludwig. And um, he's the brother, but he's quite a bit older and has a grown up daughter already. So I, I think it's at least 10 years later, but it's all set in the 19 now. It's always set in the 19 now, <laughs> which is 1942 at this moment. Um, we found out that, yeah, you can stick the, the monster in, in a volcano and he's going to be fine in the end. I mean, you have to dig him out, but he's going to be fine. He's instructable. This it's actually not this movie, but the next one realizes that, hey, you can make use of the fact that this monster is indestructible. It's because you can mess him up and then have him come back. Because they mess him up in this one. Because Igor, who is in this as well, Belly Lugosi again. Because the casts are as much as possible the same, but they cannot always get the same people. So Belly Lugosi is back as Igor. And Igor, who is a hunchback, wants to have the monster's body so I can have a strong body, put my brain in a in, in monster body. And uh, Ludwig Frankenstein is going to do it against his will, but he's going to do it anyway. So that's what this one's about. Um, it's it's a movie. It's got uh, all the things that all the other ones <laughs> have. Uh, it doesn't have Basil Rathbone, which is a problem in itself, but Cedric Hardwick is not that. It's just the plot for this one is not as good as the previous one. Um, I think that one was a little bit more on the nose, so this one's okay. It sounded like they wanted to keep the option, the door open for Basil Rathbone to come back as uh, Wolf Frankenstein. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Uh, he, ne he never did, so that's a uh, <laughs> spoiler, he never did. <laughs> um, one of the other things is that I noticed when, when I had to make a chart to <laughs> because people are changing uh, jobs around and one of the reasons that because uh, the, the 1942 version uh, Boris Karloff is apparently unavailable and Lon Chaney plays the monster uh, but then Lon Chaney becomes available because in 1943 uh, uh, Frankenstein with Wolfman the Wolfman is played by Lon Chaney and he was already in another movie and that's another one of the gripes I have with this movie series is now we're harking to a movie I haven't seen. It's not a problem because they reintroduce the wolf again. Uh, apparently that Wolfman movie is 1941 with Lon Chaney as a Wolfman who is by the way excellent. She is a very big physical guy and a wolfman yeah physical guy so he physical he physicals all over the place so great um but he has his own movie and so he comes into this movie but they reintroduce him they give you enough information on who is it why is it what is going on um but because the frankenstein character is <laughs> and the wolfman is actually interesting 
Fingerson gets relegated to second fiddle Rudy Gregory. Um, the um, effects makeup is wonderful. They get better at the makeuping. Um, I do feel that as the films go into the 40s, they lose that prettiness of image. The image is good and there's no ugly pictures, but the balance, the, the thinking about, oh, if the person holds the hand here or here, that sort of goes away a little bit. So I'm getting this, the, the perfect cut picture and, and all that. That feels less and, and that's uh, for that you get back better acting, better sound design, better scripting. You yeah. get stuff back for it. But the qualities that the 31 version and the 40, 35 version have visually is less in the 43 version. It's just that's the way, way it was. It, it just went out of fashion. This, it's an art doc deco look basically and I love a good art deco look. That went out of fashion and they went for a different look. They wanted something more modern which has a different look. Um, it's the 40s, it's not 30 anymore. So They also started the lore of location because where is Castle Frankenstein? We want to go to Castle Frankenstein yeah, because there were a lot of fans for this thing. So they made up a country called Vesaria where this land is, <laughs> which is a mix up of Austria with, with other stuff. It's, it's, they, they made up a second place where they can have Dracula because there's also a Dracula set of movies, which is not officially linked to this set of movies, but, and this brings you to the next movies, the next th three movies, where the whole thing just evolves in, yeah, the Frankenstein monster is not that interesting, the Igor is interesting, but Igor was killed off, so we have in the other ones we have chaps who have the same job as Igor but just have a different name. And one of in one of the later films she's actually she's actually female. <laughs> female Igor. <laughs> who surprisingly enough in that movie is the only person who says anything sensible at all. Because <laughs> it just evolves. And they are not bad movies, so I have them all as okay or okay minus. Um, it's just, they, the central point of the Frankenstein story is as a scientist you make something, are you responsible for your creation and how far does that go? And absolutely none of these movies do anything with that at all. And that's, that's upsetting. So I've uh, also watched The House of Frankenstein, The House of Dracula, and Albert and Costello meet Frankenstein. <clears throat> At this point it's 1948 and um, I have to see this, this one also is okay. It's okay. Um, it's a comedy and, and I was sort of worried I was going to hate it because comedies don't travel and <laughs> I don't always like comedies. But they never made it unpleasant in any way. They just they, they deliver a Frankenstein and a and a, and a Dracula uh, as a moving men to a museum, and of course they they get out and they get into scrape that way. And and I have to say, I, the only reason I gave it an okay and not a good is because it's pretty near inane, but it's one of the better ones on this list in the way of making a plot. The the plots. A cohesive plot. This is it is a cohesive plot. It's just very in <laughs> and a very much. Uh, but on the plus side, uh, what they could have done was make the the monster and Dracula look ridiculous, and they didn't do that. They made them look scary, or as scary as as any of them, and they. As the characters that they, the, the comedy people, the characters that they were, were scared of the, the monster and of Dracula um, and, and of the, the Wolfman as well. Because 
the Longchenny Lon as the Wolfman is absolutely golden in this because he, he a lot of the time he's actually human so you can talk to him he is very personable Longchenny is very good um, the Dracula uh, so we have the Dracula who is uh, in couple of the movies in the house and the uh, house of Frankenstein and the house of Dracula John Carradine is the Dracula he's um, he's a little bit like the the village priests being Dracula so that's not a bad look by the way but I was going oh wow reverend Dracula <laughs> Oh wow! Oh, but he he did turn scary at some point. He he could do pull it off, but I had to go. Oh yeah, okay, yes, hmm. very different, F very different from Lugosi. He was very, this, uh, um, John Carradine is a very slim fella, and and but Lugosi is a very round fella. He's got everything is round on him, so they were very different. And uh, Lugosi, of course, is was Hungarian, and he had the accent to match, which actually was a big problem for him because he couldn't get rid of the accent so he couldn't do roles without the accent it just typecast him horribly and it had hollywood before the 60s was very unforgiving to that and so he played a lot of dracula when he didn't really want to which is kind of sad um on the up in the Frank Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Uh, the Franken person is actually the daughter from the, the Ludwig's daughter, who had been grown up in the previous one, but played by a different actress. But in this one, she's played by a Hungarian, <laughs> and she has an accent to match. It is kind of strange when you're watching them in in sequence, and in one version she has no accent, and in the second she has a thick accent. Literally. Okay. They are not, they're trying to be consistent, but they are absolutely not consistent. And this killing off of all the monsters in the movie, and then the next movie, the, every, every monster is still there, and they actually cured the wolfman at some point, and then in the next fil film, he is again the wolfman. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is pulp. Um, it is pulp. And um, pretty pulp, but if you're gonna watch any of these movies, watch the 13, uh, 1939 Son of Frankenstein, that's the only good one. And look at the pictures and maybe some scenes from the others, but basically only the bride is worth looking at. And mm -hmm. uh, Lon Chaney is good, I and mean, maybe I should watch his, his standalone movie. Uh, Lon Chaney is good. I have to say that. Basil Rathbone, Lon Chaney. Bella Lugosi. It's Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that is my opinion, I think.